Okay, making a camera system like this is a pretty complex job, but this is what's supposed to set the Galaxy S20 Ultra apart from the S20 Plus and really every other phone on the market. Everything but the camera is excellent though. So let's take a look at the total package and see if it's worth your dime, or er, $1,400, in our full review of the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Let's go over what the Galaxy S20 Ultra is. It's a lavishly equipped device with an extravagant price tag. $1,400 gets you an opulent 7-inch display with a 120Hz refresh rate, the best internals you can ask for in an Android phone, 5G compatibility with all the major networks, and perhaps most importantly, a monstrous camera setup comprised of a 12-megapixel ultra-wide-angle camera, a 108-megapixel main camera, and a 48-megapixel telephoto lens capable of up to 100 times zoom. These enormous camera specs put a sizable raised slab of optics on the back of the S20 Ultra, making an already tall device just a bit more top-heavy. With a 6.9-inch dynamic AMOLED display, this isn't going to be an easy one to handle with one hand for most people including myself, who for the first time had to use one-handed mode to interact with the phone when using it with one hand. But it does give you a wonderful viewing experience. The Quad HD Plus AMOLED display delivers deep, inky blacks and popping saturated colors paired with sharp detail reproduction. Combined with the booming clarity of the stereo speakers, it's one of the best viewing experiences you can have on a phone. Add in the 120Hz refresh rate, and you have a smooth, sharp, and pretty screen to scroll through and consume content. Creating content on the Ultra is the big sell though. Big numbers are being thrown around here, like 100 times zoom, 108 megapixels, and 8K video. But what does that all add up to? Well, as you might have heard by now, reviewers have been complaining about a few specific camera inadequacies that Samsung says will be addressed in a software update. Among the issues reported are trouble finding and keeping focus, and over-processing photos to the point of smoothing out details. These aren't exactly new issues for Samsung's Galaxy S phones, but my review unit still showed marked improvements in most of these areas over last year's Galaxy S10s. As with most high-end phones, ideal lighting scenarios pick up great colors and detail. In the default 12 megapixel shooting mode, which composes shots through pixel binning on the 108 megapixel sensor, the Ultra shows its improvements in detail capture and dynamic range over the Galaxy S10, proving less likely to blow out highlights, smooth over gradients, and produce overly warm photos. This was the case with both the main sensor and the 40 megapixel selfie cam which also showed great improvement over the S10 selfie game in the same areas. More stunning details can be found by flipping on the 108 megapixel capture mode on the main camera, but that sort of difference isn't something you can discern by looking at photos on your phone. With this, you can crop photos down to a smaller area and still have perfectly shareable images, but you're more likely to do that in real time with a high-powered zoom lens. Yes, the zoom lens is as impressive as you've heard, but after about 30 times zoom, it becomes more of a party trick than anything else. High zoom images are too grainy to be of any use beyond saying, look at what I can do. And subjects that far away are difficult to see with the naked eye. So it's unlikely you'll ever notice a shot you can only capture with 100 times zoom. Even if you did, the grainy blurry result wouldn't be all that pleasing. Compared to other devices like the iPhone 11 Pro and Pixel 4, which max out at two times optical zoom, the S20 Ultra has four times optical zoom and uses a hybrid of digital and optical magnification, which Samsung calls space zoom, to go all the way up to 100 times. Taking photos in low light and using Samsung's night mode are also improved over the Galaxy S10. And while low light gets details and colors on par with the best of them, night mode is a step behind the Pixel 4 and iPhone 11 Pro in terms of consistently producing great looking accurate imagery. There were instances in less challenging low light situations where the S20 Ultra took the best looking night mode shot, producing sharp details and punchy colors that weren't too dramatic. But in challenging situations like a dark walkway or even a dimly lit restaurant, the Ultra showed issues with focusing, tinging shots heavily with yellow, and sometimes putting together a blotchy mess of a shot. These were situations where the Pixel 4 and iPhone 11 Pro usually pulled off much better shots than the Ultra. And the same remained true for handheld shots of the starry night sky. And of course, there's just no match for the Pixel's astrophotography mode. It was easy to pull off any of these shots on the iPhone and Pixel without error, but the S20 Ultra needs a couple of tries due to focusing and processing issues. Perhaps these issues will be addressed in the impending update, but right now, software and processing hold the S20 Ultra back from camera dominance despite its hefty hardware. Single take is fun to use though, capturing about 10 seconds of video and pulling out portrait shots, black and white images, wide angle photos, short GIF like videos, and whatever else the AI sees as useful is a great way to quickly generate alternative takes on a photo. 
It's perfect for the quick, casual photos and videos you might share on social media. 8K video capture is available, but you might not want to use it. It doesn't work with other important features like Samsung's super steady stabilization. They take up a massive amount of space, over half a gig per minute, and there aren't many places you can truly appreciate it other than an 8K TV. And you can forget about recording 8K video after the sun has set. Those videos are considerably grainier than those shot at a lower resolution like 4K, despite using the same camera sensor and lens. Glitchiness in the stabilization, shutter roll, and random distortions, especially on bright lights, are all very apparent. In reality, most of these issues can impact the Galaxy S20 Ultra's video capture no matter what the resolution, stabilization mode, or lighting. It's just a matter of which situation produces less of these effects. Although the iPhone 11 Pro isn't perfect at night either, its superior image processing avoids the many glitches, distortions, and eye-shaking pans that the S20 Ultra produces. When you step into daylight, you'll see these differences too, although generally the Ultra's issues are lessened here. Video looks its best at 1080p with super steady on in bright lighting conditions. Distortion is much less common in daytime lighting, but shutter roll is still apparent, making camera pans look jittery and over-processed. Enabling the super steady stabilization, which only works on 1080p video, helps mitigate this enough that I'd recommend shooting with super steady enabled as much as possible. Both 4K and 8K capture are less attractive options because of their inferior stabilization. And at night, you'll have no choice but to do 4K or lower with super steady since 8K is useless in such low light, and super steady uses the ultra wide angle lens, which can't pick up enough light for a usable night video either. So the cameras may not deliver on the decadence they promise, but every other aspect of the Ultra's performance doesn't disappoint. With 128, 256, or 512 gigabyte storage, and 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 865 processor, you'll not want for anything while gaming, multitasking, or using the Ultra in your day-to-day. -day. Top that off with 5G support for all the major US networks, and you have an entertainment and work powerhouse that's every bit as excessive as its price. I was able to get about 1.6 gigabit per second download speeds in New York City on Verizon's millimeter wave network, though coverage is very spotty. So I more frequently would hit between the 400 and 800 megabit per second mark. Hopping on T-Mobile's more widespread but slower sub-6 network, I'd max out at about 100 megabits per second. Battery life may be where the S20 Ultra delivers the most unimpeachable performance. With the 120 hertz refresh rate enabled on the display, a known source of increased battery usage, I was consistently able to get a full day of heavy usage out of the S20 Ultra, and around a day and a half with very light usage. Enabling the 60Hz refresh rate can squeeze out an extra hour or so depending on usage, but for the lovely smoothness of 120Hz, that little bit of battery sacrifice is a no-brainer. So only one question remains, should you buy it? As great of a big phone as I think this is, I think you can be just as happy with the Galaxy S20 for $200 less. You can also do better than these cameras with an iPhone or Pixel in pretty much every way besides Zoom. And really, why else would you buy the Ultra? If you absolutely must buy a $1,400 Samsung, then go buy the Galaxy Z Flip and have a way cooler device. Otherwise, with or without a camera update, the S20 Ultra might be the easiest phone to skip this year.